Hey there everybody, it's Wayne D. And if you're watching this, you're on the website, WayneD.com. Got lots of uh, good stuff here. And uh, here is the hero of the moment, Jordan Spieth, beating everybody's ass. And he's got a whole bunch of interesting things going on in his golf swing. So I thought I'd just ramble through a bunch of these swings that I, that I have of him. And... Uh, just make some observations about what uh, what I think he's doing here. So a lot of interesting things. Now, when we look at this down the line view, the first thing that that I notice is the posture, which is a little back in the heels to begin with. This is at Isleworth. Uh, we won by like 100 shots. This is a pretty level lie because um, I've been in this place before right in front of that bunker. Although the tee I hit from is probably well up from where he knocked that one. So watch the legs. You'll see the sit move. And you'll also see the counter rotation of the leg. When we talk about the face on view, you're going to see a forward press with the hips and the hands at the same time and in concert with that if you watch the if you watch the lower part of the leg you're going to see that left calf appear a little bit right there so that right leg is rotating counter to the eventual backswing hip rotation and then when he takes it away He's going to use what uh, my friend Jeffrey Mann calls a right forearm flying wedge takeaway. So the right hand is going to bend and it's going to immediately flatten the left wrist. If we look at his grip, you see it really doesn't match. A little, it's a little strong on the right and a little weaker on the left. So he's probably a two knuckler, one and a half, two. But by the time he gets to shaft parallel it's going to send his arms out away from him a little bit that left wrist is going to be flat if not just a fraction bowed because when you flatten a weak grip it looks bowed more immediately now also note the right arm we're talking about right in front of him no flare whatsoever so this is not anywhere even close to a to a Hogan takeaway. Looks kind of more like Adam Scott in the arms with the uh, hands way out in front of the chest. You can see the hands right in front of the sternum right here. If we look at the the head, there really isn't much of a right load here. Just pretty much dead still. Now the right arm, when it gets pinched in front, like that it usually likes to pull back a little bit to finish the backswing because you really hadn't done a whole lot up to here and you can see that this is going to be the case because right here we can see the top of the forearm and as he gets to the top we can see an increasing amount we can see the whole right forearm now so that means that the the right arm is now advancing backwards but because it was so in front of him in the first place, he's got a little bit of room to do that and still have the arm pointing pointing more out in front of him. So the arm doesn't really get behind him like most people who pinch the arm do. They'll pull that thing right back. And you can't see his right shoulder blade here. So you would say, well, that's not such a big turn but all the crank is in the left side here and the the right has probably helped a little bit but it's still in great shape there now, if you watch a hogan he would have he would have had the elbow over here instead of over here at this point in the swing but we're looking at speeth and it's working out fine for him so check out the wrist at the top it would be dead flat to even slightly bowed. 
but because of the grip type, the face is not shut. Now, another interesting fact. He'll sit back, and as he goes back, if you, this is a pretty still camera here, it's not perfect, but watch his head. Now, you'd have to consider that some kind of a mistake, right? If you could sit back in the backswing and lean into it in the forward swing, would be the opposite of what most guys do, which is to stay out over the ball in the backswing and then back away in the forward swing. So that's something very different. Now, as far as the as far as the hand path goes, yeah, you can see it's pretty close to being right at the ball. And look how fast the left knee disappears here. That I mean, the the interesting thing is what it, when you lean into the into the sh forward swing, you would think the left leg would get stuck. And this is another thing that normal players would do. Anything that kind of moves over here to initiate a downswing would get stuck on that left knee. But he's got powerful rotation. And the more I look at this. See, I'm always a fan of, of teaching, at least, that you would push off the right to get the lateral movement going, but I don't think he's doing that at all because if you look at his foot right here, as he approaches the moment where he needs to be moving or get himself forward, his foot is actually leaning over this way a fraction. So what is he doing well, remember now, he's backed off, and now he's going to start leaning into it. See, I think when he gets that thing starting to lean forward, what he's going to do is he's going to use the muscles in the right hip to begin to rotate. And with the, the falling move, it's kind of a gravity move into the forward and left with the right hip rotating I think you could say that he initiates his downswing from here instead of down here so this is not really it's interesting it's not really coming off the ground I mean he's using the ground because you have to pressure load to use those muscles but he's not physically driving his hips forward you can see right here there's no real there's no real forward movement in the right leg when he starts right there see that's the start of the downswing so it's more like the backup move which you can't see here and then the lean in move which you also can't see here just turns into a start down move with that rotation in the hips. Now the leg movement is really also super interesting here because that right leg is now wheeling around and you can see the heel is going to come almost straight up. But watch the, and you can see there's, if you note where his hip is here, so see how much the camera's moving. We'll just draw the outside of that tree. Yeah. So the, the line moved over. So that line would be about here. So that's still a significant amount of lateral movement. So you can see that right there moving. Now watch, <laughs> watch his left foot. Now a lot of times when I do these swing analysis, I'll just... I'll grab my little junior club and get in the mirror and try to emulate or imitate what's going on. And I'm telling you what, when I get to the, the impact area here and try to get past the ball like he's doing, you talk about physically difficult. This right in here is brutal. <laughs> See, I got a bad back, and this is it's just undo. I couldn't do it. I mean, I couldn't even like try. I mean, we talk about athletic. 
So this is a classic, um, again, what my buddy Jeffrey would call a drive-hold release. So you can see, and this is with a driver, remember. So you can see that the at impact, which is right there, the club is slightly forward, I would say. Not probably hitting down on it a fraction. The right wrist is going to go past this ball. And it's just going to keep going and that left wrist is just going to stay like this. And that right wrist is just going to stay like that. So the left arm, it never extends. It's always bent. So check this one out. This will give you a better idea of what this leg movement looks like. So here you can't see the the sit back and the lean in. You can see a little bit maybe, but if we watch the the beginning of the downswing, this is why right here I think this is where the combination lean in and rotation is going to start the movement. So the right leg now, because those muscles up here really are firing and rotating that hip, the right leg is moving around and the hips are twisting at an extremely fast rate. So when he hits the, <laughs> look at that left foot when he hits that ball. Now the other guys that kind of look like that are Charlie Hoffman has his foot like that and J.B. Holmes has his foot just like that too. But I can tell you, if you try to do this yourself and you get to about here, if I ever, if I ever made myself do that at high speed, you could just like call 911. Let's find, here's a good example of the takeaway. Now this shot cut off the forward press and all the backup, but look at the left wrist there. There's the right arm. So when I say in front of you, I mean that's in front of you. That thing is like right here. Now it's not going to stay like that. It's going to pull back just a hair. See that? And there's that left wrist flat. Now, he accentuates that wrist coming forward. So check that, check the angle here out. Now, if you're coming down in your swing and your wrist feels like it's still neutral like it was at a dress and it's not bent down, then you're not doing what the vast majority of great players do. That left wrist flexion on the approach to impact is super important. And what you see in Spieth, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka is these guys are so strong now and the clubs and the balls are, are so good that what they've done and I think this is a hallmark of, of what's going to be going on in a, in a more modern swing maybe or at least at the super high level is to be able to keep that left wrist flex the hole or bent or bowed whatever you want to call it um, throughout the swing and use the pivot and the thrust of the lower body to hit the ball plenty far. And what this does is it allows the face to be stable past impact longer than what you would term a throw release where the left wrist would be more neutral and then the right wrist would roll over. Now the face, don't, get, don't uh, mistake this for a block when those hands look like they are way forward like that. So here's where you see the face stay a little more stable. But when that club is getting to here, it's turning over. Because the arms, the club is pointed into the chest here. The chest is rotated incredible amount. So there's no way that the face is not closing.
Because if you look, the left arm is still connected up underneath the armpit. And if you try to drive the face too straight out for too long, you'll get a complete opening here on the top of that left arm. Now, this is a little more of a still camera, so if we look at the, where the where the head is and what it does, yeah, this camera is more steady. Look at that. So he's going to stay over it with almost no right load. He's going to lean into it and almost he's going to get a couple inches ahead of where he was, and then as he hits it, he's going to back up and drive hold that thing like that. And then he, look at the, watch his legs. Look at the straightening of the right leg. So if you try to do that, if you try to like snap your knees like that as you're getting into the follow through, your butt is squeezing like crazy. Chest is opening up. Look at that. Both legs dead straight and way apart. So the only thing I can say here is, don't try this at home. There's the foot. Yeesh. <laughs> and that's all. There's an iron shot from the face. There's that forward press. Pretty pronounced, really. Then he locks the hips in. Gives it a little bit of a slide out to the right, leans back into it, the right arm goes up behind him a little bit, but not really behind him, it just moves that way. Notice how late the right arm connects, so he's got tons of width in the downswing, the right arm doesn't connect until here the shaft is about parallel to the ground, and then boom, and there's the left arm, never straight after the approach. So that's just a little rambling view of Jordan Spieth. Very, very interesting swing.